nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, hello. My camera's like a little bit, I have to stand like right here. <laughs> hello, oh, Emily, I was just thinking about you last night. Nice, welcome, nice to see you. Hi, Hannah, hi, Terry, hey, Lisa, hey, Diane. How are you all? I'm so happy to be here too. Oh, you know what, I forgot to put, let me see. We're gonna switch this just really quick. Um, can I do that when I'm live? Yeah, we're gonna do this live. <laughs> nope. Um, where do I get this from? Oh, I'm in the right place. Okay, 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 just a second. Do I not have something for, for wardrobe by me? Let's see here. I know I have one set up for wardrobe by me. Where? Here, here we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, here we go. Cause we, I got the pattern from, well, I actually, this is kind of a unique um, sponsorship. I had already bought the Amelia Bomber and then I reached out to Christina because she's always offering like, hey, if you ever want to sew something, just let me know. You know, she's she's super generous that way. And um, <clears throat> she, you know, I record some videos for her and they do the editing. So it's it's kind of a interesting way to go about it. Like it's, I get the easy part. Not according to her, she doesn't like recording the video, which is really funny to me because it's like the editing is, can be a little bit, but the way like that, she actually really inspired me to change a little bit about the way how I record things. Um, and one of the things that she had me do was record each step in a separate video. So sometimes I'm uploading 35 videos to her, <laughs> which to me I'm like, ugh. But it does make editing in some ways a little faster if you don't really do it full time, you know what I mean? So um, anyway, um, I had already bought the Amelia Bomber jacket like last year and I had already gotten this double-sided reversible pre-quilted fabric from Fabric Godmother, um, not knowing I was gonna use it for the Amelia Bomber. And she, and Christina's always like, hey, you know, if you ever wanna sew something, just let me know. If you wanna do a live stream or whatever, she sponsors a lot of the men's stuff I do in July. And so I just asked her recently, I was like, I have this, so. So in some ways she's sponsoring this stream today cause she's gonna pay me a little bit. So anyway, long story short. <laughs> Hi Sue. Hi CK, welcome. Hey Aisha. Hey Shem. Hey Adrian. Hi Julie. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Hi Amy. Welcome. Nice to see you all. All right, so this is my fabric lineup. This looks darker on camera, but it's really, yeah, you can see it is a rib knit. Amy, this is, you were asking about rib knits the other day. 
This is one I got from Nick of Time. It's very stout, really thick stuff. Um, very stretchy too. It's not gonna be like your soft bamboo rib you'd use for like children's wear. It's great for this bomber. I've used it. I needed a quarter, this is my Nick of Time story. I ordered, I needed a quarter yard. They sent me like two yards. <laughs> Um, and I've been using it ever since. This is the project will po probably finally use it up. I tried to find an olive green that would match. I'm gonna use the olive on the outside. This fabric here, this whole project is kind of funny how it's come together. This fabric I bought accidentally from one of the needle sharp sales. It's actually quite lovely up close. I did not buy this though. Like I did not pick, I don't know how this got into my cart if I bought it. If it, what, I don't know. It's a stretch poplin. I love it. It's just like, it would be really pale on me to wear. So um, it's just been in my stash. My daughter loves yellow. It's kind of got a yellowish tone to it, but she just wasn't into it either. Like she, I showed her and she was like, okay, you know. But I think it'll be perfect as a lining with this olive green. I, they were sitting on my shelf next to each other one day and I was like, hold up, that looks really good. So, you know. Hi Libby. Hi Michelle. Hi Mullen. Yeah, no worries, Amy. I know ribbing is a really strange thing. I was just looking at my um, reminders on my phone. My to-do list is my email and my reminders. It's always my to-do list. So <clears throat> besides like the one I make, not, not directed by other people. And um, I was just talking to me yesterday about how some people's emails will have like thousands of emails. I'm like, oh, I couldn't operate that way. Like my email has, like I manage it and I use it as a to-do list, right? And same with my reminders on my phone. One of them I set up recently was, and I don't think I really articulated my question. I just wanna remember this question I have. So if I ever have the opportunity to ask an expert, I wanna know, what makes one fabric stretchier than another? Like say you're buying a cotton jersey and you buy a cotton jersey with the exact same fiber content, the exact same weight, and you get like four of them, they're same content, same weight. Um, why are they different stretches from one another? Um, same with like ribbing, you know, like why is one ribbing stretchier than another ribbing, you know what I mean? I wanna know how stretch ends up in fabric. Like what is making it stretchy? Cause if you're using like, say you're using like 100% cotton, there's no spandex, no lycra, none of the name brand, none of the non name brand stretchy fibers that they're adding. What, why, why? Like I know it's cause it's knitted. I'm not like, I, I know enough about fabric to know that this is a bigger and deeper topic than I know anything about. So, <clears throat> now nah, there's no benefit to using stretch poplin as the lining. Not when the outer is fixed. I really don't think it'll have any benefit. It won't negatively impact it. Cause you know, so it's really stable. Like I, I wouldn't use a knit as a lining um, <clears throat> because if it was, it, unless it wasn't very stretchy because it'll sag. It'll sag, it'll grab your fabric. This is really smooth. I think this will work. It's very lightweight, very smooth. Um, so yeah. So one of the tips Christina gave me, of course, after I had taped my pattern together, is if you're using a pre-quilted fabric for this jacket, she recommended going a size up. Yes, it will be the lining for the sleeves too. I'm not thinking this is a very fitted jacket, so I don't. I think this fabric will be fine for the lining. Normally, I like a slippery lining for sleeves, you know. So that I know, right, Malin? Exactly. But we're guessing. Yeah, is it the um, is it a, a wrapped core fiber that they're using to knit with? Is it a you know like <laughs> I'm just kind of curious. So, okay, uh, I think I'm gonna first cut out the ribbing, the interfacing and the lining so that I can get that off my table because the knit is literally like having another being in my office. I cannot wait to get rid of this, but I feel like it's not gonna use it. Look how huge this is. Look at this. It has been this massive thing. Hold out your arms in front of you. 
like you're hugging someone. The arms barely make it around. This has been in my shop taking up so much space. <laughs> it's funny because I saw Christine Haynes. I'm pretty sure it was Christine Haynes get some of this too in a different color. And um, when it arrived, she was like, holy heck, this thing is huge. I was like, oh my gosh, that has a legit footprint in my office. And we were laughing about it. I don't know her, but <laughs> it's just funny. So it's like a sleeping bag. Exactly. Hey, Walter. Hey, Elena. Uh, and what is manufactured for the commercial market? Yeah. Yeah, that's true, Amy. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing is like, I've thought about all those things, right, Libby? And I just kind of know, want to know why that is. Hey, Donna. <clears throat> Donna, I talked to Hearts Fabric. I did a post in the Guild. I know you don't get to go there very often, but I made a post the other day that like four people commented on. I need all of you to look at it and read and comment on it <laughs> because we're going to have a meetup at Hearts Fabric in Santa Cruz May 15th because Donna's coming to town from a long way away. So... All right, uh, you don't have to comment on it, Donna, but I did, I did um, talk to someone at Hearts. We're, we're good to go, so. All right, I'm going to change the pockets. I always change something. Oh, this is what I'm making. Very simple, Amelia Bomber jacket. That's a, a dart, by the way. Cool, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to, Donna. I just thought you'd like that. Um, Let's see, if you wanna know how to make your instructions into a booklet, I have a short on my YouTube channel. It's so satisfying. And I just sew down the middle of it. So the kinds of pockets on this right now look a little bit like, like this, right? So they are sides, basically side seam, inseam pockets. Um, and I'm going to do a welt pocket. If you need help sewing your inseam pockets, you can totally ask me that when we get to that step. Oh, here's my, my um, zipper. Oh, here's the other thing I noticed. Um, when you look at the zipper sizes here, I have a feeling that this, from the zero to size 12, it says 18 inch. I think it's supposed to be 20 inch. I asked her, I don't think she saw my question. Um, it's 20 inch for the upper sizes. Um, so I, I would get a 20 inch zipper. You can always shorten it at the top. So it didn't look like it uh, 18 inch would fit. It would be too small. You'll, you'll, you don't want a zipper that's too small. Too big is better than too small. <laughs> you have three other bomber jackets at home in your stash. <laughs> like patterns for them, Diane? Yeah, we're going to do a welt pocket, but if you've never done a welt pocket, you're going to be able to do this one because we're going to do a really simple kind of welt pocket. In fact, um, hi, Regina. I was looking at a sewing... I wonder what that book was. It was like a um, like a general sewing book. And I was just kind of leafing through it. I like looking at the way sewing instructions are illustrated. It's really cool when you find a really good illustrator for stuff like that. It's great to get tips on how to draw that thing, you know. So she, she got rid of it. <laughs> she um, got rid of it, Shem. Probably because she had a little tiny typo in it that she didn't like. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> she was saying that she has lots of uh, Amelia, or bomber jackets in her stash. And she just wants to add them. She wants all the bomber jacket patterns. <laughs> um, anyway, um, they have a whole section on welt pockets. And it was really interesting because there's a, there's, there's a few different ways to do welts on the outside and there's a few different ways to do them on the inside. And I think that they're all great. You just gotta find the one you like doing and the one you can remember to do, right? So, <laughs> exactly, Diane. <laughs> um, and 
The funny thing is the one that we're gonna sew that I see the most common on home sewing patterns wasn't even included in their welt pocket list. And this was an old school sewing book, like tried and true, um, well-respected, very thorough sewing book. And they didn't even have this style of welt. That's how easy it is and how unlike a real welt pocket it is, so. Yeah, exactly, Terry, right? You, once you start kind of getting the gist of like what's happening there, you're like, wait a minute. I don't have to do that. I could do the inside of this one, the outside of that one. So um, you're all, if you can, if you can sew a hole in fabric, like you could just put something right sides together and sew a rectangle, you can do this. That's how this is. Oh, I know. I hurt my finger the other day. I think I told you guys this. I hurt my finger the other day. Um, and I can't type right now on my keyboard. It's everything about the band-aid is catching all the keys around it. It's so annoying. On my phone, same thing. Yeah, I'm having so much trouble. Finally got the band-aid off and then I bonked it the other day, yesterday, and it was not pretty. So uh, I can't, I'm, I've got this project I keep kind of hinting at that I'm working on and I can't record anything until it heals, so. Okay, here's my little scrap of rib. So we're gonna get rid of some of these pattern pieces on the table and the fabric on the table here. We have the ribbing is the cuffs, the waistband, and the uh, collar. I have three rotary knives out because I don't know which one actually has a sharp blade in it right now. All right, so this one's on the fold here. This is the hem band, so we're gonna place it first. And then we need two cuffs and we need a rib collar on the fold as well. So we have plenty of fabric. This is the perfect amount. I was so excited when I finally gave up looking for olive colored one by one rib or um, I would even have settled two for two by one. So I, uh, but then I realized <laughs> the world of olive greens is vast and varied. And I just thought I was getting into that realm of maybe I need to like order swatches. And I was like, no, we're not, we do not need to be matchy matchy like that. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's get this going. I'm just gonna cut the cuffs first here so that I can open this one up. I'll, well, well, maybe. Oh man, you know, I may have to trim all my pattern pieces to be able to cut the quilted fabric. Cause look at, it's already tearing my paper just going through rib knit. So it's gonna be kind of an interesting one to cut. All right, we need recycling and we need fabric scrap bin here. Um, I'm not gonna cut this little notch. That's just a fold line. Don't worry about that. You don't need it. I have a whole nother printed pattern out here of the other size that actually, I think I'm just going to set aside somewhere. Ooh, um, that's cool, Mullen. Do you have a used book site that you like? Because, um, I've actually been looking at them a lot lately because of this project I'm working on. And um, that was the way to go. It was the cheapest way to do it because there are a lot of books that are just like, they're not that great. Or they say what they, what they say they are, they really aren't. Like one of them I got and I was like, this is just like a dictionary of stitches. It was really weird. I was like, I don't, like that's not what, it might be useful to someone, but it just isn't what I wanted. Hey Lydia, how's it going? Yeah, exactly, Sue, that's a good point. So if, if you're, if you have, this is circular knit by the way, see, so this is a, a complete continuous piece of fabric. See that? Continuous, no selvage, right? Um, Make sure that your fold 
is actually on the grain line. You shouldn't have any problems with some of these, but more importantly, if you have a really deep crease in that fold, open up your fabric and cut it out someplace else. Don't put that crease on your fabric. You won't get rid of it, okay? Yeah, 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 that's a good idea. Yeah, public library, interview the book first. I feel like some of the good ones are the really, not really old, but like 20 years old or more. And um, they're expensive. Some of them, I saw one that was going for something like, it was like $800. So, cause the, the, the vintage of it and um, the sought afterness of it. Can't remember which one it was. I was not interested in that. Okay. Uh, do I want these pieces? No. Mm -mm. Okay, so we probably want a little notch here, here, this is your shoulder line, and then your center back here. I'm trying to be a good girl and not notch my ribbing. Do I have, um, I need another, I need like chalk or something. That way I can get rid of the pattern piece. I don't have to keep it with, with it. here we go. Oh, 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 I got my, I got the plate. For the binder. Do you guys want to see this? It's good news and bad news. <laughs> Where is it? Here it is. Okay. All right. So if you were here Thursday and I opened up my uh, binder attachments on camera and uh, hooked them all up, we determined by the end of it, I needed to attach it to the machine to get the best performance. So I ordered one from eBay and here's the deal. <laughs> the plate came, it's very well made, it's nice, right? This is how it goes on the um, machine. So the way you're looking at it with these recessed ovals, these, this is what attaches to your machine right here. And you get these two little screws to do that with right here. The problem is this little screw sticks up above the of the surface of this plate and then my attachment won't slide because the screw is in the way because it's supposed to slide right here all right so there's one issue the other issue that i that um i found is they gave me washers so then when this is attached to the machine and then you attach your your uh, binder to the front part this oval and see how it slides right there. This little screw right here, the shoulders of this lower part closer to the screw where my fingernail is touching, right? That is a little too narrow to make sure that you are, the shoulders are on either side right here, right? So they give you a washer, but the washer isn't either. The washer just makes it awkward and it falls, you can see, into the thing. So. I think the bracket's gonna be great, but I actually need bigger washers and sh screws that don't have this really tall top. So good news and bad news. But once I figure that out, <laughs> which is kind of a bummer because if you pay $30 for something like that, it needs to come to you ready to use. I have a hardware store nearby. So yeah, hey Anna, how's it going? Oh, you don't want a, sw a Swedish language one? I feel like so much good sewing stuff originates in Sweden. Okay, yeah, that is rubbish. I totally agree. So if you order the, the plate from, um, the gal in Sweden, get the, or if you order the binding attachment, just get the plate from her. Yeah, I totally agree, Terry. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, you know. Washers, no big deal. The other thing is kind of a problem because I can't even get the, um, uh, I can't slide it close enough to the machine to use it. 
yeah, like, it's not always, it's not just about the plate. You have to have the right things to attach it, and that's really annoying. The more annoying part, too, is that I can't even complain about it yet. Like, I can't use neutral or negative feedback unless I've had it for seven days. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, but I can't even use it. <laughs> like, come on, you know? So yeah, more time and headache, right? I'm just gonna mark. I feel like I'm gonna do all this right now and then I'm going to just keep the pattern piece with it because I know the, the chalk won't stay there. <laughs> usually I just nip into my fabric, but I'm trying not to do that because usually there's a smaller seam allowance when you get to your knits and then you have the danger of that little cut showing. Yeah, that makes sense, Malin. Okay, let's get this back on green here. Ribbing on, uh, the grain on ribbing is very obvious. You can see the grooves of it, right? Oh, I should, I'm kind of curious about the fabrics I got to make sure that they work good on camera, you know? All right, let's get rid of that. And that, and that. Don't notch that. You don't need that. We will find the center of this when we're about to sew it. All right, just put that in your bin. And we have a little scrap. This may save me for some cuffs, you know? So we'll save this little piece. All right, so now we have some lining. And we need to move this beast over here. If you're ever cutting pre-quilted fabric, one of my tips is to secure the where the um, quilting is. Because look, you can see that this has come undone right here. See that? If you have, like, the way your um, process is, is that you cut something one weekend and you sew it the next, or maybe even a month from now, or you batch cut, make sure you secure those threads. Because if you don't, what happens is if they come undone, and they come undone back, like going in, outside of your seam allowance, you are going to have this quilting coming undone, right? That seems really obvious. But the problem is, if you need to secure that quilting thread, you need to find thread that matches perfectly, and then you're gonna have all these like back stitches. Like, so if this was the side seam right here, you'd have all these back stitches just next to your seam right there. You know, so um, that might look not look that great. I ha that happened to me when I sewed something actually for wardrobe by me, and I did a the Ozark vest and it had a quilted lining, and I didn't secure the quilting. And right when I was about to sew it, I was like, "Wait up here, there! It's all coming apart," <laughs> and I had to like stop recording, secure all of my, you know, all of my um, quilt stitching. All right, this looks one way to me, kind of. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna hardly use any of this fabric. It's so wide. What do you, oh, the little one's wearing. You got a climber? <laughs> I had a climber. Hey, Anne, how's it going? Yeah, that's what I would do, Amy. Interface them, glue them, stitch them, just do it inside the seam allowance. <laughs> um, and do it ASAP. 
when you are cutting out your garment. Don't wait. It just kind of wriggles out all by itself, you know? And you know, like the, like that, that olive green, it's got olive on one side and khaki on the other. I'd have to have like two matching threads in order to fix it. And if you didn't want all those back stitches, then you'd have to like unstitch more of it, pull the tail to one side and then hand tie it. You know, like it just creates a lot of problems. So <laughs> we did the op, what am I putting this? This is on the fold. Yeah, cut one lining on the fold. Um, we did the opposite shim. We just like put everything on the ground. We had a crib for literally like nine months, eight months. Like it was not long and she was climbing out of the crib. She started walking at 10 months. You think that that's really cool at the time until you realize having a potato is so much easier to, to take care of than having a potato that walks. This plate feels pretty good. Oh, I bet, Amy. Yeah, yeah, I bet. Uh, we're going to notch this pleat back here. Only 3 8 inch seam allowance, so don't go crazy. Oh, maybe this, maybe this blade could be updated. Look at that. I thought it was cutting. <laughs> oh, I bet, Shim. Yeah. It's kind of funny too, because like in some ways you're so used to it, you know, you know, it's like, of course you want, you know, those milestones, right? But then at the same time, and you know, like there's like hardships because yeah, you can't do the same things. The family can't do all the same things. And then once that <laughs> she starts doing it, you're going to be like, okay, wait, this was easier before you could do these things, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and toddlers, you know, they sneak up on you. Like when they're crawling, you hear them coming, right? You don't turn around and tumble over them. But when they start walking, oh my gosh, the number of times I mowed my daughter down because I didn't know she had walked up behind me, you know? Because <laughs> she was so stealthy. Okay, yeah, we need another. Let's try a different one. Well, this one feels pretty good. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know, Sanwi, but they, they're not working. The, I know exactly where those go, um, but they didn't, they're not integrating well. So there's a little pleat right here or something. I don't know what this is. We're gonna notch it. Yeah, so, so if these, these right here, this is where it attaches to the machine. This screw right here, it goes right in there, right? But this screw sits above the surface of the plate, right? So I don't know if you can see it. You see how it's sitting? <laughs> I don't want to lose it. So see how it sits above the plate? That means that this right here, it can't slide back here because the screw prevents it from going past a certain point. So I think I can go, where was it? can't remember where it was at. Maybe I need to, hmm, you know what, actually maybe I could slide it forward. Maybe that's it. Well, thanks for making me look at that again. 
It doesn't change the washers are the wrong diameter though, but that's so much easier to get a hold of, you know? No, I can't use the, there's no screws on the machine. It's just two holes. <laughs> really, Malin? That's so funny. Hi, Jessica. How's it going? Um, you know, when I visited Belgium and my daughter was uh, 14 months old, that's what it was. She was 14 months old. We were there because my husband was getting a surgery. And it was the middle of winter. It was like February, right? And um, we had her in, the one thing I had learned when traveling from America to Europe is don't bring your American stroller. Your American stroller will not work if you go to a charming city with cobblestone streets. It's a nightmare. <laughs> you need a pram or a sprung buggy because the cobblestones don't play nice with our strollers that we have here. And so I knew that because we'd traveled there once before and we brought a backpack. Like back then they had these like frame backpacks for kids. Now they have like ergo carriers and we had a sling but I couldn't do that the whole time. And she was 14 months old. So she was too big. Wait, let me get rid of this. So, um, I had her in a backpack and what I quickly learned was that children were seen and not heard there. It was so bizarre. Like it was very common. Like people, we got a lot of dirty looks from um, people when Cricket was just like, loved hearing her echo when we'd be walking through like little tiny um, cobblestone walkways with little storefronts, you know, and she'd be like, ah, ah, you know, listening to herself and people were, giving us dirty looks, which was so bizarre, right? Um, I need, I need um, welt pocket pieces. Let me see where my pieces are. They are right here. Cut away, pockets, here we go. And so, wait, what does this one say? Oh, this one's all welt pockets. <laughs> so um, I befriended, me and my friend befriended this woman from the Czech Republic whose husband was American. And um, we were chatting with her because we'd go to like a playground, right? It's the middle of winter. We go to a playground and the older kids would be on the, the play equipment, but like kids older than Cricket were sitting in a stroller and they were just there in the stroller. Like, like two and three year olds were sitting in a stroller and um, I, I talked to her about it and she said, yeah, they, and, and, and you'd see the stroller in front of houses with kids sleeping in them straight out of calling the mid, call the midwife. Like I kind of was like, what the heck? This is so crazy. People just leave their sleeping baby in front of their house in the stroller, right? And not even babies. These are full on toddlers, older than Cricket. Cricket was old enough that she was just mobile. Like she was like, had been walking for three months, you know, and like she couldn't do much at those playgrounds, but she liked watching older kids. And um, that woman told me, she said, yeah, you know, like kids don't, they don't encourage them to walk here. They, um, you know, this is just the, how they do it. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. So anyway, hey, Rachel. Uh, yeah, I know how to install it because that there is a picture on their site that's really good. There's a series of pictures on how to do it. It's just not the, um, the screws are quite a little bit different. No, it's not. I promise you guys, I promise, I promise. Because look, this is how I thought it went. I thought these two holes went to the machine. No, you see how there's an oval around these two holes? See this oval? Look at, right? Okay, this goes to the machine. Yeah, it is, it, it is totally confusing because I was kind of like, I was looking at it like this, like, oh, these go to the machine. 
I had it flipped over and then it was wobbly and I was like, that's not right, right? Because I was like, oh, this has to be adjustable, you know, like this is how I looked at it and it was really awkward. And then I looked at the, the listing on eBay. I had it upside down and backwards. <laughs> oh no, upside down, I had it upside down. Yeah. So yeah, that's how it goes. Wait. Sorry, I like this. Sorry, I'm I'm not I'm looking at the computer screen and it's it's kind of confusing. This is how it goes. But Sanwi's right, like those screws go there, and, but they can fit because I can move them up. No, it didn't come from the same place because I ordered this from um, eBay after the stream. So if you order the binding attachment, and you want the plate, get it from the person who makes the binder attachment. Baby sleep so well. Yeah, it's true. They do sleep. And Cricket is that like, she loves to sleep in really cold rooms. Yeah, exactly. It's so old school. Um, no, no, Michelle. It needs to be stable. I promise I have it figured out, you guys. I promise I have it figured out but the washers aren't right. And I promise they're not right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> All right. It will work. It will work. Okay. So this is, um, what is this here? This is a welt with a flap. Um, I'm going to do this kind of well without a flap. That's what I'm going to do. Just like that. See a little welt right there. Okay. This was, I think, from the, um, yeah, I think I'm going to use that. What is this? Scrap paper. What is this thing? Oh, I've been looking for these. Oh, this is going to be perfect for grading. This is not Wilt Pocket stuff. Okay. This is my grading thing. This is awesome. This is perfect. I have been looking for that folder for a while. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let me get my Wilt Pocket pieces out of here. Although I kind of want them at an angle. But this still helps me kind of noodle on it while I get there. This is cargo, cargo. We could do this kind. No, we can't. I think we're just going to draft it. <laughs> I love how I'm always like, I have these things. Drafting will be faster. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why that was marked Welt Pockets because it's my grading things. Like they were resources, um, like all those cut apart pieces were things I made a long time ago. I was going to do a thing about grading and then I didn't because I thought, eh, people don't really care about this. And um, yeah. And that's what this month's SBS is about is like, how do you grade between sizes? How do you go up in size, down in size? How many sizes can you skip? It's gonna be good. All right, um, let me get a few pieces of paper here. So this, why is this so shallow right here? Is it because I taped something together there? Yeah, so let's just add a little bit here. I remember something about this. I've already figured out this kind of angle that I want. And I drew roughly on here. See those little dots? So when I'm looking for the pocket placement, I trim it down, hold it up to me. Sorry, that's probably loud on the microphone. And then I literally just pretend like I'm putting my hand in there, right? So make sure you know where your point of entry is, right? You need to let's see what our full screen looks like. It might be off. So I'll do this and I'll be like, okay, 
The reason I don't want to side seam is that you'd be way back here putting your hand in your pocket, right? And that's a little bit awkward. So I'm going to do this. It's a little more comfortable. So my fingers want to go in right here, right? And then they want to sit like this is comfortable when my arm is, you know, relaxed, right? So right here is where I want my hand to go in, okay? So let's look at this. Centered, I'm going to center my little, whoops, let's put my overhead back on. We're going to center this opening here right where I want that, just like that. I'm going to line up the bottom down there to the bottom. And now I'm going to transfer this box onto my top. Just like that. All right, now, now that I have, shouldn't have lifted it up yet, <laughs> like that. Now I'm going to find the end point here. Quick and dirty pattern drafting. Okay. Yeah, it's like, I'm not even like putting it down, putting them down for putting like their kids in strollers out front um, because I, I did it in the car, you know, like she would fall asleep in the car and I would just leave the car in front, out in front of the house, you know, I wasn't worried. Back then we had a Ford Focus wagon. That thing had the coolest feature and I've never had a car since. And when you were like, say you were listening to music in the car and you stop the car and you turn it off, you could just press the button on the radio and it would continue playing whatever was on. You could, you could change it, whatever you wanted, but like I'd be playing a disc and uh, you could put it for one hour. And so it was great. Like I would pull up, she would fall asleep. I'd just keep that going, turn it on and say one hour and then um, go in the house. <laughs> and then watch her like a hawk. All right, so we need two of these with the hole and two of them without, because we're just gonna make it like that. I can't remember how I like this, so I'm not gonna think about that too much. We're just gonna cut four of them out. And then we're gonna get to our interfacing and our quilted stuff. Oh, we need uh, the welt cover. That's the only other thing I need. I really liked the pockets I drafted recently or used. I don't know what I used um, on the Cameron and on the Tamarack that I made recently. <laughs> I don't know where those are. So I looked in the Tamarack thing and I'm like, of course it's not in here. I must have um, pulled them and put them somewhere else. Okay, so my opening is a half inch by five and three quarters. Let's double check it. And we're going to make a welt cover. Let me get this out of the way. I still have a lot of this fabric. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. I want my dirty ruler. <laughs> so we're going to make a one inch finished welt. So we want this to be two inches plus seam allowance. So I'm going to make it a fat half inch, so quarter inch, quarter inch seam allowance. Um, and I'm going to do that uh, 
fat seam allowance because the quilting is going to be thicker. So when it folds, I'm going to lose a little of my seam allowance. That's what I'm thinking, right? So, um, of course, I don't have the numbered side. So we want it to be five and three quarters finished, right? Plus we need seam allowance on either end. So quarter inch on each side, six and a quarter. And I'm just gonna pat it a tiny bit because of the quilting. Anytime you're doing really thick fabric, sometimes it just gets easier if you just are honest about the fact that that quilting is probably going to be a little harder to deal with. So let's see, so it should be on either side, right? All right, and so this is gonna be in self. And we're gonna keep this for, we're gonna keep this for the box that we'll draw on right before we sew. All right, this is our self. We can get rid of our welt pocket folder the actual pocket folder. Let's do our interfacing real quick. Clear the deck some more. Are you trying to say this isn't spring or summer related? Wow, Terry. <laughs> um, there's the lining if you need your pocket. Don't forget to cut the pocket lining. This is interfacing, 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 interfacing. Um, oh, I need two sleeve lining. I thought I was going to cut myself first, and I didn't. So I put my sleeve with that pile. So shoot, we need to do that still. What can we do with our narrow, our band? This thing here, let's roll. It's almost the same width. Oh, nice, Mullen. What did you make? Several tops ready to sew. Nice. And a linen trouser. I'm making some linen Kosecha pants this month, but I don't know if that counts. Because they are pants, you know, not shorts. A bunch of us bought the new Itch to Stitch um, knit dress. Every time I see a post of the tea house dress, I want to make another one of those. <laughs> and it sounds like she's finally um, working on, or I don't want to say finally, it sounds like she's working on making more sizes in that. I was just thinking today about, I wonder about making the tea house dress in knit. One of the biggest detractors of that dress, I think for people, is that it looks like it takes seven or eight yards of fabric and people don't wanna use that much fabric, you know? But um, I, it doesn't take that much from my experience. Ooh, nice, Terry. I'm just on this Trico life now. <laughs> need one of these and two of these. Oh, neat, Malin. That's cool. I saw that they posted a picture, not them, 
but uh, sorry, this is not even at all what you just said, but um, you just reminded me of it because you made some bedrock teas recently by So Liberated, and I saw that they made one out of into a dress. They didn't show it, so maybe it's a tease for one being in a dress. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting, Terry. No, don't think of it as stretch interfacing. It's just interfacing that works well. <laughs> like it doesn't cause me problems. I'm not using it because it's stretch. I'm using it because it adheres really nicely and I trust it, that's all. It, it won't, uh, it won't um, impact it in that way, you know, like stretch versus non-stretch. But if I was making something that was stretchy, I would use it. Oh, okay, that's cool, a little hack tutorial. All right. We have this now. We still need that in woven. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I hate the other one too. With a burning passion. <laughs> I still feel very betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Save this little piece here. I'll just put it in the bolt here. Okay. Well, that didn't go well. <laughs> Cut the sleeve lining, and then we're doing our quilting stuff. This will use a lot of this fabric. Look how huge the sleeve is. You'd rather sew a wedding dress in satin than do a puzzle? Oh my gosh. That's nuts to me. <laughs> Find it easier if I hold my ruler on here like this and then just slide it to, to the um, selvage, you know? I got so excited when Cricut would be like, let's do a puzzle and I'd be like, okay, <laughs> I wanna do that, that sounds great. Mullen was just posting in the guild about playing fabric Tetris. Tetris was my number one game when I was young. Loved it. And it's so funny, I've heard the term fabric Tetris so many times um, in, the, in the sewing world. Never till today in seeing Mullen's post that it did it really make it click for me probably why I like pattern drafting, right? I mean, it's shapes, you know, building blocks, you're, you're fitting together. Um, it really makes sense. 
Those are the kinds of quizzes they need for young people. What kinds of video games do you like? <laughs> All right. Front and back. Okay, wait a minute. Um, I would just clip a second notch right here on this back sleeve. I just was like, wait, why did I only do one notch on each side? I would do a double notch on your back. Something looks funny to me. Okay. Oh, you're the Scorpio? See, I, I, my daughter was the Scorpio. And... Yeah, she was a handful. <laughs> is Julie looking for a job? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not about what you want. It's about what they want. Okay. Okay, let's get the big guns out here. We'll move, we gotta clear the decks a little bit. Was this one, this one we weren't into, this blade here. I haven't tested this one out. All right. So, I'm gonna be wearing a sleeping bag. It does feel like they took two pieces of fabric, decided to quilt them together. Look at this. Look at this mess. Look at that. There's no selvage. There's no selvage. <laughs> it is the wild, wild west with this fabric. I hope, hope, hope. This project takes up most of it, but I literally can't imagine wearing that much fabric on my body right now. So it most likely won't. Or I'm really hoping that someone else wants a matching bomber jacket in my life. <laughs> I can make two. You know what's cool about this? This is the exact quilt design that is used in the Kashmiret um, Mercot puffer vest. There's two offered in the pattern and this is one of them. Um, and when I quilted that, I over was overthinking it because I was like, well, I can't fit like perfect repeats across this size. So I could do this or I could do that. And I offered these, these options when I made the video. Um, and, and Cashmere was fine with me doing it. I said, well, do you want me to do this or do you want me to do it this way? Um, and they said, we'll do it this way. Just do it like the instructions, but you can offer those. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, the genius about this particular quilt design is that it doesn't matter how close or far apart it is. It all nestles. Like it looks normal and fine because of this squiggle. So when you put the, the template, like this right here, like you're, maybe you're only stitching these two, right? and then you're stitching them here. But you've created the exact same design in between. It's really kind of genius. Anyway, it's kind of hard to explain um, until you do it and you realize how cool it is. What is that on the fabric over there? Let's see how this is to cut out. I'm a little worried. I need to cut a... Man, I may not cut all of this on camera today. It might take me a bit. I'm gonna cut all the paper off of the edges here. I also think cutting this as a single layer would be better. Oh, I need to cut two interfacing of this piece right here. Get this back out and we'll set it right here.
Oops. Okay. These are cut. Already. Did I cut this? I cut this. Where's this right here? Yep. I, yeah, I did, Mullen. It's cute. It's really cute. I'm just like, a quilt is a huge project, you know? I do plan on making placemats. Um, and uh, I, I had a lot of fun. I ended up making a template in Procreate. I look for reasons to use Procreate. Because I'm just not that like, I'm just not that great at coming up with ideas of what to draw, right? So I like tasks. I'm a very task oriented person. So I, um, when I saw the placemat pattern come out, it's free, right? I, I got it. And there's lots of configurations offered. It's all half square triangles. So I made a template in Procreate that was the size of the placemat. And then I drew in gray lines to indicate the half square triangles. And I did it both ways. So it looked like each rect, each square, I got to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, um, each square, I actually like, if this was the, if this was the square, right? Each square of the placemat. I actually drew the lines like this and like this so that I could choose to color this square or this triangle, this triangle, or um, this triangle or this triangle, right? So it was like this. So I made placement like that and then I colored it and I had a lot of fun with it. And then I made it animated <laughs> using animation assist. So I'll have to show you guys that because it's just kind of a silly, goofy little project, but it kept me engaged. And now I really want to make the placemats. Problem is my animation of each placemat, like it's a, a, a square like this that travels across the placemats like that, um, is seven placemats and I need eight. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I hope the quilt company goes good. I, I feel bad that I, I'm just like, I just don't want to do a quilt. It's a huge project, right? And I just already have so many things I'm making. Okay. All right. All right. So this side's shinier. Do you see that? Do you guys think I'm gonna like this? I hope I'm gonna like this. I like the idea of sewing a bomber jacket more than the idea of wearing one. <laughs> this is how I get into these things. All right, so this one, we could fit this almost all the way across, right? Can we actually? If I put this in the middle of a repeat, and then flipped it right there. I could. So I think what I'm gonna do is cut, yeah, because I could, fit, okay, I'm gonna cut a chunk off that can fit the fronts and the backs. So it's easier to manage. like it I like I liked the fabric a lot like I like this olive green more than I realized you know yeah right Michelle I think you could make it reversible do I think you could make it reversible not with the pockets if you did patch pockets on either side and no no. 
I think it'd be too complicated. The collar is really where you get into trouble. The the collar and the and the cuffs and the waistband. Yeah, you can't do it. <laughs> you well, I could make it reversible if I lined it. You could make it lined and reversible, but not reversible showing both sides of this. You're right. Yeah, right, Mullen. Yeah, I think it would be kind of tough. All right. So I'm going to focus on a little bit of print matching with the, with the quilting. Why not, right? So I'm gonna go down the middle of this squiggle right here, best I can. Maybe we'll put the, the fullness right here in the middle. If I, if, you know, I'm eyeballing it, I don't know. We're gonna pin it to the quilt and hopefully it doesn't mar it in any way. Actually, what we could do is just measure the middle. <laughs> Sometimes I remember math, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, you guys are still talking, okay. I keep feeling a fuzzy right here from this, this fabric and I just can't find it. It's that kind of fuzzy that like sticks to every little thing on your, your um, hand, you know, like every little skin thing or whatever. Okay. And then we're gonna put this fold I didn't want to, I don't want to cut the fold line off, but I might have to because I don't like cutting right here along the fold because then I might accidentally not put it on the fold. Also, I just cut my paper off that I would have pinned this with, but oh well. It's all in the name of matching. Pattern matching. Oh yeah, it's so, it's a, such a physical task, Michelle, like physically demanding of your body. Ask Elena, she's been doing that too. She's been, she's been quilting a quilt. Um, it's a lot of work. I've done little, I've done a lot of little quilts, like crib sized for my pets. I just make a lot of, I used to use scraps, cut up a bunch of squares, just make some quilts. And then that's where I've trained all my pets to lay down. So if they're on the couch, they're laying on one of those. And I just, and they're small, so I can throw them in the laundry really easily. They're not a dog bed that's gonna like get gross and not be washable or break down. You know how they fall apart sometimes. And um, I call those little quilts pet mats and I've made lots of them. And just that little crib size quilt is so much work under the machine. I roll it up and I put it on the machine and I kind of unroll it as I get through it and you kind of end up with like a two rolls on the side. It's, it's a lot of work. <clears throat> yeah, and like uh, anything bigger than that, oh my gosh, it's hanging off, it's pulling, it's a lot, it's he really heavy duty stuff. All right, so we're gonna start cutting. <laughs> I can already tell that this is kind of floofing up past my cut edge because of the quilting. And I don't know if you saw me line it up to these pins and then I had to realign it. The quilting was pushing it away. Okay. This is a little awkward. <laughs> I 
after the stream, I'm gonna secure all my seam allowances with the quilting. I am not getting into that pickle again, let me tell you. It cost me so much time and it was just really annoying. It was a navy blue quilted lining and I had no thread to match that particular navy. It was like a indigo. So it had that kind of like purple cast to it. It was so obvious everywhere I wanted to backstitch the quilting and fix it. Thankfully it's on the inside of the garment. My husband's not gonna complain. And it was, you know, at the side seam un under the underarm, you know, but still. Okay, I almost went like this. That's why we put the weights across. <laughs> All right. Not, no floofing. I think the stitching will be enough until I get to sewing it. I'm not sure what else I can do. I mean, I'm open to ideas. I think, um, I mean, you know, that's how we secure all stitching. We stitch across seams. But yeah, if I, I'm hoping, I, anything that's gonna pull on it is gonna pull it apart, right? So if I secure it, then maybe it won't get pulled right there. That's my, that's my rationale. <laughs> Just gonna slide this. Let's see, where does this one end? This ends like in that bulb there. Okay, it kinda looks the same. Let's hope. This is when you want your big 60 millimeter blade and the 45 is feeling dinky. This is so badly cut. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I did. And at the time I had a, a manufacturing business and we would make quilt kits and sell them. We would cut four inch or five inch squares of all the different fabrics, sell them for dirt cheap. <laughs> and um, I have so many um, pet mats from those. It's almost like a time capsule for me now because every time I pull one out, it is like memories of manufacturing. People would ask us, when are you gonna have quilt kits? <laughs> And we had bind we would sell them binding, um, backing, all of it. It was very low key quilting though. Okay. Plus they're like washable. I've used like flannel inside of them and not batting. Yeah, navy blue is a horror to match. It's so weird. Yeah, it's just one of those things where it's like gray. Gray can be either green or purple, you know? Blue or purple, you know? Okay. <laughs> All right, Terry, I know. You'd have to use something really thick. I don't have a 60 millimeter rotary. I've uh, used one before when I saw a friend had one. I was like, ooh, I wanna try this out. And I was like, nope, I can't use this thing. It was, it was too dangerous. Like it just felt huge for me. Okay. Yeah, you might need to, Michelle. You never know. If you're struggling to cut afterward, I would. Um, just because you don't want to strain yourself. That sounds so momish, but just, I've been through hand therapy, and it's because of my rotary knife. So I was rotary knifing a lot yesterday, just thin fabric and just strips, cutting up a bunch of samples, just rectangles. And um, I can feel it. So it goes all the way up my arm into my shoulder blade and up into my neck. And I have this knot, a permanent knot there from rotary blades. So you gotta be careful. All right, so how do we want our center front to look? Do we want to same thing like use the same 
center. Where was the bottom at of this thing right here? So if we do the middle of this one here, but the center of one of these like that, that works. We did a center. Oh, and, but the center on this one was a wide one. So we did a center right there. Yeah, I think they do. Look at, look at how much this stretches. <laughs> it's not that it stretches, it's just that it's fluffy. All right, so. Okay. Get right up to these edges. A dart and quilted fabric. <laughs> I just assumed that the bomber you use quilted fabric. Is that not typical? Because when Christina said, oh, you should go up a size if you're using quilted, I was like, oh, maybe I'm not using like the recommended fabric, but I guess I assumed quilted fabric would be the recommended fabric. Maybe it's leather. <laughs> Imagine me in a biker game. I'd be so obnoxious. Okay, I'm just gonna do that for now. And refine this a little bit. My blade is against the paper, but oof, the inaccuracy. Oh yeah, twill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, Terry. What about satin? Hear me out. <laughs> satin and we could get it embroidered like with a T on it, big T for Terry. <laughs> I'm liking this idea. <laughs> big T in cursive. And then like the um, emoji for the bomb under it, because you the bomb. <laughs> I'm always trying to make Terry blush. Okay. Uh, all right. I have never sewn a dart in quilted fabric before. Stop it. <laughs> well, if you're asking me to stop it, I don't know what I can. So actually what I want to mark, I want to mark this on the back side. And what are you right here? I'm just going to, I'm assuming that's a clip right there. I'm just gonna put a pin in there. All right. And then we're gonna keep this no matter what because of the rectangle. All right, now we do this side. And then we've done all the big pieces. No, we didn't do the sleeves yet. So do you remember when I made the Remy Raglan and I said, all right, this thing fit me kind of funky. And so I added in a dart and, and you guys were all focused on that dart because I was using it as a demo, not for the fitting of the Remy, but for whatever we were doing that day. I think it was cutting confidence. 
And you guys are really focused on the cutaway dart that I did because it was such a big dart, I ended up cutting away the seam allowance for it so that it would be less bulky um, and I wouldn't have this huge wing in there of fabric, right? Well, I also um, brought in the armhole. I did so much to it that I didn't quite get that dart in the right place. So the apex of the dart or the vanishing point of the dart was right on my apex. And so even my husband was like, oh, you're wearing the shirt that uh, accentuates things. He didn't say it that way. <laughs> I was like, ah, shoot. So I was noodling on the shirt the other day and I've been noodling on it since then. I've worn it a few times, you know, whatever. But it popped into my head that I could solve two fit issues with one thing. So what I was finding, it's a raglan, right? So I was finding it was tight across my, my shoulder right here. And the apex of the dart was like up here, right? I needed more room here. I needed this apex to drop. I could not reposition the dart because I cut away the fabric. I could shorten the dart. I could do that. That was all I could do. So what I did was I shortened the dart by a lot. Like I made the back off like over here, but it, it was still too high. And then I cut through my, from my neck to the hem of the sleeve and I inserted a, a panel that was shaped like this. So it was wider at the neck up at the top, right? Like this. And then it kind of went narrower to the, at the bottom like this, kind of like that. And I inserted that in there and it was kind of a pain because I had all this decorative top stitching. So I had to take out all the top stitching and hand tie it and ugh, it took me forever. But um, that dropped the dart down because I expanded here and it alleviated tightness and it looks pretty good. <laughs> I was kind of shocked. Kind of a weird fix that only worked. See, that's like the perfect thing someone would do a YouTube video on like how you can lower the dart. And then they show you that they slice open the top and it's like that will lower the dart but you'd also you know if your sleeve and your armhole fit you would potentially be ruining the fit and the, that so it only worked because of that i'll have to wear it this week show you guys because now i feel like it's doable and the little panel looks kind of cute all right, um, I just noticed there's another notch for the, um, for the bottom part. I'm impressed, this fabric is pretty forgiving for needle holes. All right, so we have a little notch right here. This one's for the pocket, I don't really need that since I'm not doing the same pocket, but if you are doing that pocket, definitely notch it. Other there. Oh, where do you send yours to? Oh, LP Sharp. I literally was just about to get rid of a whole case of old blades. That's cool. All right. Oh, oh my gosh, I just put that on the wrong side. <laughs> oh my gosh. I got that one out to do this and then I laid this on there like it was this one. That's so funny. What a, a brain, a brainical illusion, you know, kind of like an optical illusion, but it's brainical. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay, we have our fronts, we have our backs. We have confidence. We have lots of weird cuttings. Oh, we're gonna keep this because of the pocket opening. We're gonna take this and try to treat these kind of gently. And we need the sleeve. What do I do with the, is it just buried in here now? It is buried in here. Oh, okay. We need to do some bin maintenance here. Well, I think that's what she's saying, Michelle. We need this. We don't need this, actually. We need this. Okay. Just 
sleeve sleeve here we go we're going to put some of these pieces away these right here You always have to suffer with me when I clean up because this is part of the process. I have to do so much cleanup after a stream anyway, so you have to be a you have to be a part of some of it. <laughs> like this. And then we need this. This is this sleeve. We got the sleeve. Okay, yeah. There we, go. we have so much quilted fabric left. <laughs> Why did I get this much? There's something on my fabric right there. Think I could do two layers? I don't. There you go, Terry. I like that. And you can buy new blades or resharpened blades. Oh no, there's a lot. I think you've asked that before. Snow bibs. When would I use those? Bomber jacket for Loki. What if I made one for Molly and Loki? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Get him some little goggles. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've done a poll like that, Shem, the scissor versus rotary thing. And there were a lot of people that use scissors. I think a lot of quilters use scissors. Even though um, rotary was essentially designed for the quilt market. Because it's a lot more accurate. It's easier to be accurate. Yeah, see, Elaine is backing me up here. We're just gonna cut this piece off. All right. Look at how much I have left. Okay, I'm gonna cut one at a time. I'm just gonna center it on one of these squiggly things <clears throat> again. I'm not gonna be as precise just because it's a sleeve. It will be uh, hard to tell anyway. It'll actually look off center because the center is in the middle of the sleeve and not the forward front um, thing, you know? Sleeping bag for Loki. <laughs> The pets are just so happy right now that the sun has been back. Molly's like laying in the sun any chance she gets. It's, it's just so sweet. My cat has like a little routine, my old cat, not Noodle. Noodle's his own little teenager self, but um, Haku, every day he is sleeping in the sun by the window upstairs and it's so cute. I have like five pictures of him doing it. <laughs> This is cutting really good. This blade is definitely cutting it. <laughs> Maybe I'll save those. They might work for what I'm doing here. All right, so we're gonna, you know, if this sleeve is symmetrical, you actually don't even need a front and back notch, if I'm being honest. I mean, all sleeves are symmetrical. Usually right here is the only difference on side to side, right? I mean, that because the notch is in the middle, it doesn't matter 
that there's a front and back sleeve because you would get the same result either way if you put it in backwards or not. Yeah, they are usually, if you're pinning your things to the fabric, that's when you, you can use scissors. In fact, I'm just going to lay the seam, the sleeve right side up again and cut again. Um, and then just uh, make sure I get a, a left and a right. Oh, there's that stain. It looks like paint or something. It probably happened here, you know? Like, I don't think I got it that way. I think I did it. It was maybe too close to the wall or something. There we go. <laughs> having trouble matching the pattern. <laughs> that makes sense if you have to cut on the floor, you use scissors. Is that because you don't have a mat? Yeah, you don't have a cutting mat. So she, so she doesn't, she needs to, to uh, um, lift it off the surface. I've, have, I've had all these iterations of cutting spaces, so I know exactly what you mean. And um, you probably have a favorite carpet that you cut on too, because some carpets are really annoying to cut on. I'm just gonna lay my sleeve on here and cut around it. The fabric is so thick, I'm so worried I'm cutting stuff underneath. Yeah, I was just saying that, Michelle, remember? That because the sleeve, all sleeves are symmetrical, first of all. Uh, they just aren't usually where the notches are for like a tiny, tiny bit. But this one's symmetrical at the, um, so the shoulder notch, or this notch here is in the middle. Yeah. I hope I'm cutting this sleeve correctly. I'm cutting it correctly. It's gonna be fine. It probably does have a little cut out on one side and it'll be fine. Oops. Well, shoot, that wasn't in the middle, was it? Though this, it's not looking very symmetrical right now. If it isn't, I have plenty of fabric, right? <laughs> uh, well, okay. So if your notch is in the middle of the sleeve, that means if you measured along the seam line from notch to underarm on each side, it's the same amount. So that's what I'm talking about. It might not technically be perfectly symmetrical because usually the front is carved away and I was doing a little shortcut there, but I said that, right? I said like maybe it's not the same where the, the notches are for the front and the back. So <clears throat> usually that top notch in the sleeve is forward towards the front by a quarter of an inch. That's the default, that's the standard amount. It can be more or not usually less. And that's because your arm hangs forward, right? Like it, the arm angle goes forward. And so your sleeve usually cants forward, like they cant it towards the front of the body. Yeah, I think that the, I'm gonna true that up a little bit because I don't think I cut it very accurately using the fabric as a pattern. <laughs> but if, I've, if I'm not focusing on my poor cutting and I'm looking at the pattern, 
when you have a notch in the center of the sleeve, it um, doesn't cant the sleeve towards the front at an angle. I could have done a better job, I know, but it's really awkward to cut the, the quilting. So I'm definitely taking some shortcuts. So stop calling me out for it. No, I'm just teasing. <laughs> All right, so um, we have facings. There's this little stain. Can I get that in there? I could go like this. This is better. <laughs> when I first folded it, remember when I very first folded it, when I got the pattern piece and I trimmed all the paper out and I folded it in half, it looked perfectly symmetrical. And that's what I was checking because I was like, that's interesting, that notch looks like it's in the middle. When I cut it, that's when I was like, wait, is the front actually carved out right here? It could, maybe it is. And I'm gonna double check it. All right, I have all these little interfacing pieces. Okay, so we need all of this. This is what we're, where we're at. We got our sleeves, fronts, backs. All right, so this is that little part right here at the center front where the um, zipper comes down and your ribbing is right here. That's what this piece is. Ribbing, center front zipper. Okay. Kind of tempted to put that like in the middle of one of these so there's no quilting on one of them. You know, so it doesn't look awkward. Uh, pocket facing. Oh, this is the pocket facing. I don't need that. I didn't need this. You might need this. I don't need this. That's those. That's this. This is my welt pocket. Okay, and then we need this guy, but it's gonna go into there. Yeah, there we go. We got this. Okay. This is the facing. I'm like, do I worry about matching? I don't really want to, you know? It's so narrow. I don't want it to look crooked though, and it does right now. It looks really crooked when I look at this bump right here. So um, some of you know I'm making a uh, outfit for a wedding I'm going to, and it's a theme wedding. <clears throat> and basically I'm gonna make something inspired by the 1930s. So I've, just, I've got my fabric, I've got everything now. I've decided on my pattern and I'm gonna um, make a two piece, garment so that it looks like one piece. I'm going to make a blouse and bottoms, but it's going to look like beach pajamas when I wear them together. Are you guys interested in that kind of stream? So the top I'm using is the butterfly blouse by Decades of Style. I made one a long time ago. I love it. I've always wanted it for myself. I actually made a white linen one. I, I really wish I would that thing has been sitting in my office for so long, I'm used to it, and I just need a belt for it. Um, you do, okay, because I could do that in May, you know? And for the bottoms, I'm just gonna do a really billowy pant that looks like a long dress when you're wearing it, I'm hoping. I may have to draft that because, because I don't wanna deal with fitting a pattern I might as well just use one of my own and then make it, you know? I got my hair comb in the mail yesterday and my shoes are arriving soon. I haven't spent a whole lot on this, so I'm really proud of that fact because um, you we can really spend a lot of money on all this stuff, obviously, right? <laughs> so I found the hair combs on eBay 
the binding attachment purchase um, inspired me to poke around on there. You know, eBay's become a pleasant experience every time I've used it, you know. I have this kind of uh, like old antique still feeling about shopping on eBay that isn't very positive. But I've had some really good things there. Um, except for my screw thing. <laughs> so um, I got these hair combs in there. They are actually from the 1930s. I only wanted one of them, but they came as a set. One of them's really big, but the other one's really cool. I might have a picture on my phone I could show you. Where's my phone? I don't know where my phone is though. I can't see it. Um, why did they cut interfacing out for this? Would you interface this? <laughs> Would you guys interface this? What was I thinking? Oh man, I'm on autopilot right now. And then Jan helped coached me through buying some um, makeup inspired by the 30s. So I got a, a bold lipstick I'm really nervous about. Uh, so that's my plan. That's pretty much everything I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and do some kind of hairstyle. Eliza! I'm going to a wedding is a, that is a theme. The theme is, and well, I'm gonna wear something inspired by the 30s. So it's a 1930s vintage hair comb that I got. The theme is um, ma marriage, masquerade, and murder. <laughs> it's Rayanne's wedding, so it's very cool. She's getting married. Yeah, it should be fun. Okay. I'm feeling really silly that I cut out all that interfacing out, but I'm also wondering, do I wanna use this stuff as the facing? What, oh, I almost cut down the middle of that. See, that's why I usually do that squiggly line. Yeah, you hate eBay. Yeah, I feel like it's mixed bag, but I get recommended to buy certain things there often. So it's a, definitely a thriving place, right? My little folding method. It works really good though. It's more accurate than flipping it. Okay. Where are we buying a Pico Elastic from these days, you guys? Tell me, what's the scoop on that? Okay, you know what I'm tempted to do is remove the batting and the lining from these facing pieces, just unstitch it. You know? It's actually not too bad considering. Yeah, that's what you've said, Terry. I mean, you're definitely someone who's inspired me to look there more often, you know? Do I need this? I don't think I'm gonna need this. I have enough scraps. Okay, so we just have these two pieces left, right? And then I need, I don't know if I need interfacing at all. <laughs> all right, what would you guys pick for your, this is your welt, right? The Not the welt, but it's gonna be the flap over the welt pocket, right? Quarter of an inch around the perimeter isn't gonna show. So would you like it to look like that? Would you want it to look like that? What if we matched? Oh, that sounds like a pain. Hey, Mafio. How are you doing? It's so good to see you. I hope you're well. 
Uh, Stitch Love Studio has good Pico Elastic. I'm telling you, I need a secretary for this stream. I'm writing that down, thank you. I've heard of them. I may even subscribe um, to their thingy. I gotta write down what it was for too. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right, so we're going to cut this little half here inside one of these so I don't have to deal with the stitching at all. Yeah, I think so too, Amy. Because I would still interface this if it didn't have all that. So I think I will. And it's only on the back and the two fronts. That's not bad at all, you know? Oh, okay, Aisha. That's why it sounds familiar. I saw that, uh, I think it's Bra Maker Supply is having a sale on lace, but I'm not really interested in that. I did buy two pairs of undies from Patterns from Muna and Broad. I bought the Kapunda undies <laughs> and the Dulce boxers just because I saw Malin's comment on their Instagram post. <laughs> I was like, that's what I need. I'm gonna get those. So, um, I have all this fabric that I got from Girl Charlie. Maybe I could get some lace, but I don't know. I'm pretty boring when it comes to underwear. Not You can't tell by the fabrics I picked though. All right, so there's my two things. So this is what'll show. It's like totally flapping apart, look at this. <laughs> Great. But it'll look like that from the front. No quilting. I think I like that. Definitely, um, you know, wondering. Okay, I'm gonna pin these together. Well, that's a good idea, grab bag. Okay, I like that idea too. Oops. Don't really need this. I don't think I'm gonna interface the pre-quilted I wasn't thinking. It's hard live streaming and sewing and cutting sometimes. You never have to worry if this is pre-scripted. <laughs> um, okay, so now what are we thinking about the welt? Now, what I could do, what I could do is get this so that none of it has quilting on it. I like this idea. That's what I'm gonna do. I really like that. So see if I fold this in half, and if I looked at it with a quarter of an inch removed, I could actually get that right here. Yeah, we like that, we like that. Okay, well I do at least. So I'm gonna line up the fold to that stitch line there. Yeah, that's awesome to see you, Mafio. You've been sewing much lately? Things must be busy. I feel like like um, the world got a little bit back to normal and it is just so hard to get back to normal and other things that we were doing, you know, and some of those things are the extracurricular stuff, right? They are, it is hard. Just gonna put this right here in the middle. So sassy, dead stuff. I like that. I'm fine with that. I spent a dollar fifty on my fabric. <laughs> I'm happy to take stuff that was gonna be garbage. <laughs> okay. These are my welts. <laughs> They're also weird. All my powder beads are so weird looking. I gotta write this down. <laughs> so sassy, dead stock, Pico, 
grab bags, Etsy. Man, Etsy sounds like a gong show right now. I see people complaining about like at the sellers on there and I really feel for them. I left, I had to leave Etsy so long ago and it was crazily because they didn't allow people to help you make things. So you couldn't grow basically, right? And people were leaving the platform because they were like, well, it's very clear I'm not making 100,000 wallets by myself every month, right? So um, people had to leave the platform because it was against the policies to have hired help. And you couldn't scale your business, right? So the month I left, well, within a few months of leaving, like I, le I didn't leave right away. It took me a few months to build my website, right? Like getting all the photography again, uploading it all, product descriptions, learning the website, all that stuff. And I'm not kidding when I tell you the day I launched my website on Shopify, it was either the day after or that day, I got an email from Etsy saying, we've changed our policies. You can now have hired help. I was like, what? <laughs> but there's also this tipping point when you're selling on Etsy, when your fees start equaling what it costs to have a website. And at the time, Shopify was cheap. It was 60 bucks a month. And my fees on Etsy were getting to be uh, over 100. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna take this risk, you know, because Etsy's low risk. You can just put something for sale at the time for 20 cents. They took a tiny bit and that was it. Like if you didn't sell it, fine, that's all you were out, right? On your website, you have to sell things because you have to pay for the website no matter what. You're, you have to pay, but it's a flat amount. And now it just sounds so bad on Etsy. I saw someone's like, I've been seeing like people's fees on how much they're making. They're taking like $30 for a sale. It's ridiculous. And you're competing against people who are making things mass produced somewhere much more affordably, you know? So it's really hard to set yourself apart. All right. What does this leave me? Um, I just need to unpick all this stitching, that's all. <laughs> but it really won't be bad. It'll probably just kind of happen. Look at that. See what I told you about securing your quilting? <laughs> Look at that, yeah. Oh yeah, Rachel? Okay, cool, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Mullen. And I was thinking about trying to make a pair in like a power mesh as well. Yeah, cool. This is what I do, I chip away at these projects, right? So when I saw Girl Charlie had the $1.50 per half yard knit, I just grabbed a bunch of crazy ones. And then um, I saw Muna and Brad had the underwear. I have my own underwear pattern that I really love using that I just copied a pair, but I kind of want something different. And I thought, well, I'm going to try those. I'm going to try the shorts and I'm going to try the other thing. I also learned that my half yard piece is big enough to make a camisole as long as I make the straps. So that's cool. Oh, Mafio, that is not cool. What were they thinking? Yeah. So now I got you guys, I, I looked at, I've been looking at Pico. Every time I'm shopping for something, I try and remember to look for Pico Elastic. Don't you want to say Roscoe Pico Train every time you say Pico Elastic? I do. Roscoe Pico Train. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, but uh, uh, Waywack has had it out of stock for months. Like for a long time, they've had it out of stock. And I just don't think they're the, the solution for everything. You know, like they only have one kind sometimes and I want a different kind. So I'm gonna try all these things. Thanks for the recommendations. All right, sewing part one tomorrow. What do we think we're gonna sew? Where's the directions? Let's see. I haven't looked at the directions yet. So let's see what we do first. I like kind of giving you a heads up on what we'll sew, especially if you're sewing along with me. Here's the uh, line drawing, by the way, very nice. Very excited. Okay. 
we are going to, oh, we're going to yeah, go right into the hem band to the facing and do darts and pockets. Side seams, ribbing. Okay. That actually sounds like that will be enough, like up to page 11. And then we'll have shoulders, zipper, facing. Oh, wait, we need to probably do a little more. Uh, we might leave too much for Saturday. This happens sometimes. <laughs> I'm a little worried about the Kosecha pants because uh, those um, could be more than a two-part sewing stream. Um, hey, if you're, I'm going to plug myself really quick. If you're interested in supporting me uh, monthly for a small amount for $5.99, you can join my guild, which is free to join, but you can be an apprentice. I just added a new benefit called Quick Fit. This Friday is the first one, and I'm going to be um, evaluating the fit of the Koseja pants using a pair of pants I already own. And so, thank you, Terry. Um, so you get two benefits monthly, and that is the pattern review show, which we just had on Friday. And I don't know why, but we had so much fun this past week. They're always really fun, but last Friday we, we had so much fun. And you can rewatch all these things. They're always up for rewatching, or you can join live. Because I know people are around the world. You can watch the recording. I alternate the times every month so that one half of the world can watch one, the other half of the world can watch the other, and then it flips the next month. <laughs> so it's a, a really affordable way, and you get a lot out of it. Because you quick fit is a new thing, and it's, it's going to evolve how you guys want. And my first one I was going to do, I was just going to kind of just do something, just to do something, just to kind of get my kind of fitting legs under me of, as far as like... Um, doing it in a concise manner or type thing. But then someone asked me like, hey, do you think you're ever gonna use, um, do something where you show how to use your sloper to establish the fit of a pattern you bought? Like say you bought a pattern, like you bought the bomber jacket and you're like, well, I don't know, how is this gonna fit me? Um, would I ever use my sloper, lay it on the pieces and, and do that? And I was like, well, I don't really have plans for that. But then I was like, I could use quick fit for that. So that's why we're doing the pants, so. Yeah, there is all skill levels in the guild. If you are disappointed by Instagram ads, data mining, or high pressure, like high pressure and feeling like you're always behind or the stakes are always high or you're not able to keep up, join the guild. It is so mellow and gentle and everyone is amazing and, and there are so many resources in there. So if someone asks a question and says, um, you know, I don't know how to solve this little issue. I answer everything. Like I comment on everything when it's, especially when it's something related to that. Right. But there is sometimes some really good suggestions in the comments that I didn't think of. And I love this. So like, I don't just let like everybody answer the questions without me weighing in on it. But everybody's got such great ideas. And I love the ideas because you never know what's, how someone's coming at the issue, right? If you don't have a serger or you don't have a zigzag or you don't have um, this resource available to you, someone there is in your same shoes and is like, oh, I've had this happen to me before and this is what I did. And I love, I love this because it's, it's just levels the playing field for everybody and if you're if you don't have sojo and you need some there's someone's going to be like i'm with you <laughs> they're not going to say do this they're going to say i am in, in the same boat and i love this and there's other groups there's other free groups to join in there like if you're into quilting you're like half quilting half garment sewing if you're into coat making if you're into a capsule wardrobe it's just really cool i just love how it's evolved and, um, and it's active, like people are active every day and it's not an overwhelming amount to keep up on. If you're feeling overwhelmed about keeping up in the guild or you feel like you're behind, watch, look at the, the navigating the guild post and look at the notifications blurb. I made um, all these like five minute videos on navigating the guild. Look at the, the notification one and 
check that out because I turn on notifications for every single time of someone posts and that keeps me up to date. It's not an overwhelming, sometimes it's two posts in a day, sometimes it's four posts in a day. It's not much, right? I can, and I don't miss anything. It's great. I like that. Like I thought at first I was like, every time someone posts, that sounds crazy. It's not, it's like the best way. So, and you can turn off notifications for other things like Every time someone comments on this thing you commented on, you don't need to get notified for that unless you want it. You know, I don't know. Anyway, that's my plug, it's over. Uh, and I'll see you guys sewing tomorrow. So we'll, we're gonna get through some fun stuff. I have never sewn a bomber jacket before. <laughs> and, uh, but I can do all this stuff. I can do all this stuff. And we're doing a zipper front, which I know Shem has been wanting. We're doing all kinds of cool things. We're doing this um, the angled kind of Oh, how oh, cool. This is how I was picturing this. I was picturing this neckline to be like, whoops, like this, where it came as a point right here. This is the zipper. So let me do it again, let me try again. Right, so this was the ribbing and it was folded right here. That's how I was picturing it. It's not, it's squared. Ooh, I'm so excited, that is classy. Very classy. Yeah, definitely Aisha. I think that that is the um, number one thing anyone should do when they join the guild. And I think like it looks really overwhelming in there Thankfully, it's very consistent. I don't want to throw, lose these. It's very consistent. Um, I can. I know why people get frustrated occasionally, like when they say, I'm kind of lost. And it's just one of those things where you just have to spend a little time, but then it, it all is like very consistent. And I love that. So, and you can do it on any device or whatever. And there's an app. But a lot of people just do it on the computer. And I think that's a great way to do it too. Anyway. I know you don't want to do more social media, but I'm just saying, if you want a, a low stress, calming place to be, that, I feel like that's it. So, cool. Thanks for coming. I'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> we'll start sewing, all kinds of fun stuff. I don't know where we're gonna end up tomorrow, but we're gonna get, we're gonna do a lot of good things tomorrow. I want to say through page 11, but I think we need to get past that because we, it's a lined jacket. So I need to get, let's see, that is over halfway though on pages, but some of these steps will be take, take longer. Ooh, I'm a little nervous about this quilting. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Oh, I hope I can stay accurate. We'll see. <laughs> All right, you guys, it'll be fun. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.